Something Nasty by William F. Nolan. Adults seem to find wondrous delights in tormenting the young to tears or to nightmares, primarily by aiming straight for what they know will scare the young most. It may be a reaction to their own experiences before they grew up, or it may be something else, something worse, something basic. William F. Nolan, a resident of California, has edited, written, and co-authored dozens of books ranging from the macabre to the thrills of sports car racing to his just-released biography of Steve McQueen. He has also written screenplays for television and film, among them Burnt Offerings and Trilogy of Terror. Have you had your shower yet, Janie? Her mother's voice from below stairs, drifting smokily up to her, barely audible where she lay in her bed. Louder now, insistent. Janie, will you answer me? She got up, cat-stretched, walked into the hall, to the landing, where her mother could hear her. I've been reading. But I told you that Uncle Gus was coming over this afternoon. I hate him, said Janie softly. You're muttering. I can't understand you. Frustration, anger and frustration. Come down here at once. When Janie reached the bottom of the stairs, her mother's image was rippled. The little girl blinked rapidly, trying to clear her watering eyes. Janie's mother stood tall and ample-fleshed and fresh-smelling above her in a satiny summer dress. Mommy always looks nice when Uncle Gus is coming. Why are you crying? Anger had given away to concern. Because, said Janie. Because why? Because I don't want to talk to Uncle Gus. But he adores you. He comes over especially to see you. No, he doesn't, said Janie, scrubbing at her cheek with a small fist. He doesn't adore me, and he doesn't come specially to see me. He comes to get money from Daddy. Her mother was shocked. That's a terrible thing to say. But it's true. Isn't it true? Your Uncle Gus was hurt in the war. He can't hold down an ordinary job. We just do what we can to help him. He never liked me, said Janie. He says I make too much noise, and he never lets me play with whiskers when he's here. That's because cats bother him. He's not used to them. He doesn't like furry things. Her mother touched at Janie's hair, soft gold. Remember that mouse you got last Christmas? How nervous it made him? Remember? Pete was smart, said Janie. He didn't like Uncle Gus, same as me. Mice neither like nor dislike people, Janie's mother told her. They're not intelligent enough for that. Janie shook her head stubbornly. Pete was very intelligent. He could find cheese anywhere in my room, no matter where I hid it. That has to do with a basic sense of smell, not intelligence, her mother said. But we're wasting time here, Janie. You run upstairs, take your shower, and then put on your pretty new dress, the one with red polka dots. They're strawberries. It has little red strawberries on it. Fine. Now just do as I say. Gus will be here soon, and I want my brother to be proud of his niece. Blonde head down, her small heels dragging at the top of each step, Janie went back upstairs. I'm not going to report this to your father, Janie's mother was saying, her voice dimming as the little girl continued upward. I'll just tell him you overslept. I don't care what you tell Daddy, murmured Janie. The words were smothered in hallway distance as she moved toward her room. Daddy would believe anything Mommy told him. He always did. Sometimes it was true about oversleeping. It was hard to wake up from her afternoon nap because I put off going to sleep, because I hate it, along with eating broccoli and taking colored vitamin pills and little animal shapes and seeing the dentist and going on roller coasters. Uncle Gus had taken her on a high, scary roller coaster ride last summer at the park, and it had made her vomit. He liked to upset her, frighten her. Mommy didn't know about all the times Uncle Gus said scary things to her or played mean tricks on her or took her places she didn't want to go. Mommy would leave her with him while she went shopping, and Janie absolutely hated being there in his dark old house. He knew the dark frightened her. He'd sit there in front of her with all the lights out, telling spooky stories with sick, awful things in them, his voice oily and horrible. She'd get so scared listening to him that sometimes she'd cry, and that made him smile. Gus, always so good to see you. Hi, sis. Come on inside. Jim's puttering around out back somewhere. 
I fixed us a nice lunch, sliced turkey, and I made some cornbread. So, where's my favorite niece? Janie's due down here any second. She'll be wearing her new dress, just for you. Well, now, isn't that nice? She was watching from the top of the stairs, lying flat on her stomach so she wouldn't be seen. It made her sick watching Mommy hug Uncle Gus that way, each time he came over, as if it had been years between visits. Why couldn't Mommy see how mean Uncle Gus was? All of her friends in class saw he was a bad person the first day he took her to school. Kids can tell right away about a person, like that mean old Mr. Kruger in geography, who made Janie stay after class when she forgot to do her homework. All the kids knew that Mr. Kruger was awful. Why does it take grown-ups so long to know things? Janie slid backwards into the hall shadows, stood up. Time to go downstairs, in her play clothes. Probably meant she'd get a spanking after Uncle Gus left, but it would be worth it not to have to put on her new dress for him. Spankings don't hurt too much. Worth it. Well, here's my little princess. Uncle Gus was lifting her hard into the air to make her dizzy. He knew how much she hated being swung around in the air. He set her down with a thump, looked at her with his big, cruel eyes. And where's that pretty new dress your mommy told me about? It got torn, Janie said, staring at the carpet. I can't wear it today. Her mother was angry again. That is not true, young lady, and you know it. I ironed that dress this morning, and it is perfect. She pointed upward. You march right back upstairs to your room and put on that dress. No, Maggie, Gus shook his head. Let the child stay as she is. She looks fine. Let's just have lunch. He prodded Janie in the stomach. Bet that little tummy of yours is starved for some turkey. And Uncle Gus pretended to laugh. Janie was never fooled. She knew real laughs from pretend laughs, but Mommy and Daddy never seemed to know the difference. Janie's mother sighed and smiled at Gus. All right, I'll let it go this time, but I really think you spoil her. Nonsense. Janie and I understand each other. He stared down at her. Don't we, sweetie? Lunch was no fun. Janie couldn't finish her mashed potatoes, and she just nibbled at her turkey. She could never enjoy eating with her uncle there. As usual, her father barely noticed she was at the table. He didn't care if she wore her new dress or not. Mommy took care of her, and Daddy took care of business, whatever that was. Janie could never figure out what he did, but he left every day for some office she'd never seen, and he made enough money there so that he always had some to give to Uncle Gus when Mommy asked him for a check. Today was Sunday, so Daddy was home with his big newspaper to read and the car to wax and the grass to trim. He did the same things every Sunday. Does Daddy love me? I know that Mommy does, even though she spanks me sometimes, but she always hugs me after. Daddy never hugs me. He buys me ice cream and he takes me to the movies on Saturday afternoon, but I don't think he loves me, which is why she could never tell him the truth about Uncle Gus. He'd never listen. And Mommy just didn't understand. After lunch, Uncle Gus grabbed Janie firmly by the hand and took her into the backyard. Then he sat her down next to him on the big wooden swing. I'll bet your new dress is ugly, he said in a cold voice. Is not. It's pretty. Her discomfort pleased him. He leaned over, close to her right ear. Want to know a secret? Janie shook her head. I want to go back with Mommy. I don't like being out here. She started away, but he grabbed her, pulling her roughly back onto the swing. You listen to me when I talk to you. His eyes glittered. I'm going to tell you a secret about yourself. Then tell me, he grinned. You've got something inside. What's that mean? It means there's something deep down inside your rotten little belly. And it's alive. Huh? She blinked, beginning to get scared. A creature that lives off what you eat and breathes the air you breathe and can see out of your eyes. He pulled her face close to his. Open your mouth, Janie, so I can look in and see what's living down there. No, I won't. She attempted to twist away, but he was too strong. You're lying. You're just telling me an awful lie. You are. Open wide. And he applied pressure to her jaw with the fingers of his right hand. Her mouth opened. 
Ah, that's better. Let's have a look. He peered into her mouth. Yes, there. I can see it now. She drew back, eyes wide, really alarmed. What's it like? Nasty. Horrid. With very sharp teeth. A rat, I'd say. Or something like a rat. Long and gray and plump. I don't have it. I don't. Oh, but you do, Janie. His voice was oily. I saw its red eyes shining and its long snaky tail. It's down there, all right. Something nasty. And he laughed. Real this time. No pretend laugh. Uncle Gus was having himself some fun. Janie knew he was just trying to scare her again, but she wasn't absolutely 100% sure about the thing inside. Maybe he had seen something. Do any other people have creatures living in them? Depends, said Uncle Gus. Bad things live inside bad people. Nice little girls don't have them. I'm nice. Well, now, that's a matter of opinion, isn't it? His voice was soft and unpleasant. If you were nice, you wouldn't have something nasty living inside. I don't believe you, said Janie, breathing fast. How could it be real? Things are real when people believe in them. He lit a long black cigarette, drew in the smoke, exhaled it slowly. Have you ever heard of voodoo, Janie? She shook her head. The way it works is, this witch doctor puts a curse on someone by making a doll and sticking a needle into the doll's heart. Then he leaves the doll at the house of the man he's cursed. When the man sees it, he becomes very frightened. He makes the curse real by believing in it. And then what happens? His heart stops and he dies. Janie felt her own heart beating very rapidly. You're afraid, aren't you, Janie? Maybe. A little. You're afraid, all right. He chuckled. And you should be, with a thing like that inside you. You're a very bad and wicked man, she told him, tears misting her eyes. And she ran swiftly back to the house. That night, in her room, Janie sat rigid in bed, hugging whiskers. He liked to come in late after dark and curl up on the coverlet just under her feet and snooze there until dawn. He was an easy-going gray and black house cat who never complained about anything and always delivered a small meep of contentment whenever Janie picked him up for some stroking. Then he would begin to purr. Tonight Whiskers was not purring. He sensed the harsh vibrations in the room, sensed how upset Janie was. He quivered uneasily in her arms. Uncle Gus lied to me, didn't he, Whiskers? The little girl's voice was strained, uncertain. See? She hugged the cat closer. Nothing's down there, huh? And she yawned her mouth wide to show her friend that no rat thing lived there. If one did, old Whiskers would be sticking a paw inside to get it. But the cat didn't react, just blinked slitted green eyes at her. I knew it, Janie said, vastly relieved. If I just don't believe it's in there, then it isn't. She slowly relaxed her tensed body muscles and Whiskers, sensing a change, began to purr, a tiny, soothing, motorized sound in the night. Everything was all right now. No red-eyed creature existed in her tummy. Suddenly she felt exhausted. It was late, and she had school tomorrow. Janie slid down under the covers and closed her eyes, releasing Whiskers, who padded to his usual spot on the bed. She had a lot to tell her friends. It was Thursday, a day Janie usually hated. Every other Thursday, her mother went shopping and left her to have lunch with Uncle Gus in his big spooky house with the shutters closed tight against the sun and shadows filling every hallway. But this Thursday would be all different, so Janie didn't mind when her mother drove off and left her alone with her uncle. This time, she told herself, she wouldn't be afraid. A giggle. She might even have fun. When Uncle Gus put Janie's soup plate in front of her, he asked her how she was feeling. Fine, said Janie quietly, eyes down. Then you'll be able to appreciate the soup. He smiled, trying to look pleasant. It's a special recipe. Try it. She spooned some into her mouth. How does it taste? Kind of sour. Gus shook his head, trying some for himself. 
Mmm, delicious. He paused. Know what's in it? She shook her head. He grinned, leaning toward her across the table. It's owl eye soup, made from the dead eyes of an owl, all mashed up, fresh, just for you. She looked at him steadily. You want me to upchuck, don't you, Uncle Gus? My goodness, no, Janie. There was oiled delight in his voice. I just thought you'd like to know what you swallowed. Janie pushed her plate away. I'm not going to be sick because I don't believe you. And when you don't believe in something, then it's not real. Gus scowled at her, finishing his soup. Janie knew he planned to tell her another awful spook story after lunch, but she wasn't upset about that. Because. Because there wouldn't be any after lunch for Uncle Gus. It was time for her surprise. I got something to tell you, Uncle Gus. So tell me. His voice was sharp and ugly. All my friends at school know about the thing inside. We talked about it a lot, and now we all believe in it. It has red eyes, and it's furry, and it smells bad, and it's got lots of very sharp teeth. You bet it has, Gus said, brightening at her words, and it's always hungry. But guess what, said Janie. Surprise! It's not inside me, Uncle Gus. It's inside you. He glared at her. That's not funny, you little bitch. Don't try to turn this around and pretend that... He stopped in mid-sentence, spoon clattering to the floor as he stood up abruptly. His face was flushed. He made strangling sounds. It wants out, said Janie. Gus doubled over the table, hands clawing at his stomach. Call... call a... doctor, he gasped. A doctor won't help, said Janie in satisfaction. Nothing can stop it now. Janie followed him calmly, munching on an apple. She watched him stagger and fall in the doorway, rolling over on his back, eyes wild with panic. She stood over him, looking down at her uncle's stomach under the white shirt. Something bulged there. Gus screamed. Late that night, alone in her room, Janie held whiskers tight against her chest and whispered into her pet's quivering ear. Mommy's been crying she told the cat. She's real upset about what happened to Uncle Gus. Are you upset, Whiskers? The cat yawned, revealing sharp white teeth. I didn't think so. That's because you didn't like Uncle Gus any more than me, did you? She hugged him. Want to hear a secret, Whiskers? The cat blinked lazily at her, beginning to purr. You know that mean old Mr. Kruger at school? Well, guess what? She smiled. Me and the other kids are going to talk to him tomorrow about something he's got inside him. Janie shuddered deliciously. Something nasty. And she giggled. <laughs>